So with that, we'll come to the main part of this event, the fireside <laughs> chat. And I'm going to introduce Amrit Sethi, who is a Startup Grind guest moderator, and Cyrus Wong. And before you start to speak, I'm going to make sure I turn off the screen sharing and I get your videos focused on the screen and so on. So yes, give me a second. Hello. <laughs> Hello. So let's see. Hi. 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 Let's see if I can, if I can, um, Oh, pin the videos. That's what I should do. Yeah, you, Amrit and Cyrus, go ahead. Cyrus, hi. We are actually um, in. We've, we've got a lot of content to cover, so I'm just going to speed at it and say welcome first of all, and thank you so much for being a really super guest for our show. Um, it's really an honor to have you. Uh, Cyrus being a machine learning hero for AWS is going to share a lot about his wisdom on machine learning. He's got so much richness in his knowledge. Um, I would like to just ask you to just introduce yourself briefly, Cyrus, so the audience can get a, uh, get a little bit more of an understanding of your background and how you got interested in AI and machine learning. Uh, actually, um, um, for myself, I'm actually I'm a full-time natural in in the educational institution IVD in Hong Kong, and I'm in I major in teaching and manage a course uh, study for students is major in cloud computing, uh, most likely uh, all students study AWS all the time, and actually I'm also the machine learning hero because I was the uh, data scientist of my lab called the Cloud Innovation Lab, and we have some uh, uh, data science project, machine learning project. And most likely, I, I recently I, I will build on top of my uh, on educational platform project, uh, educational related project, uh, for my for my school or or the world. As a reason, uh, everyone is going online and we build a online uh, online teaching platform that is using using all of the AWS AI service to help students to study at home. Okay, yes, yeah, so, sorry, sorry to break in yes, yes, here. I think Cyrus, I think your video is not really running. Okay. Is this it, very slow? Yeah. No, it's not yeah. really running at all. It's, it's just a oh, Okay, yeah. Maybe is it hand is something wrong? Wait, let, me, let me try to start. Yeah, because everybody sees Amrit right now while you're talking. Okay. So let's see if uh, we can get uh, your video wait up for running. A minute, but oh. Uh, uh sorry, the 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 the, the, the client application for Sony is is like hand up. Oh, okay. And yeah, I, I think Would I'm, like, I'm, like I'm unable to click on any button now. But but you can listen to me. Yeah, we can listen to you. But every everybody will see Amrit. So Okay. <laughs> um, I see can myself. You try to log in. Can you try to log in on your mobile phone? Would that maybe, work? Or just maybe, restart maybe, the client. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or restart yeah, the client. The, the yeah, client needs right. to restart, but yeah. restart the client may take time. And oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, maybe let's let's go. All right, to let's continue, and then, and then I, I you can fiddle it. it. <laughs> yeah, all right. So, um, I actually like to uh, dive into some sort of uh, well, with machine learning, I understand that it is actually one of the um, uh, underlying layers that actually has the AI as a total umbrella. And um, as I understand that machine learning is actually supervised and unsupervised. Can you elaborate a little bit about that for the audience, please, as you? Yeah, sure. And for example, actually, the, the most likely uh, for business cases, uh, we, will, we, will, we are more wise to using the supervised learning and unsupervised learning from the machine learning point of view. Actually, there is some, some kind of new machine learning called the enforcers learning, but for business, is where it's so straightforward to use the supervisors and unsupervisors. Um, the difference between the supervisors learning is that yeah, you have a something training data. Okay, you have some historical data, old data. That is, uh, you have a variable called the so-called we call target variable. Maybe for for a real case, uh, you can say that you know, I have some customer record, transaction record, and then I finally have the decision is some kind the the customer may leave 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 or trunk and we have the verb to indicate that oh he will he will not continue the service and this kind of data is called a uh, supervised learning you can put the date put this kind of data with the target and then into the machine learning model it will try to learn the pattern of of the uh, with, with the AI model and then 
the when the new new customer coming in, you can detect uh, how much volatility he will leave the he will retrain or, or no longer using the service, and this kind of supervises. And and on the other hand, uh, other other quite quite common use case is doing the we can say that do the group practice automatic group practice for mm -hmm. for more ramming. You say that uh, this is called a clustering, and both of the businesses. Uh, you can do the uh, machine learning project with unsupervised. Its most useful pattern is useful model is clustering. You can you can use a machine to help you uh, classify your data, group them together, and the similar customer. For example, this we are doing something on customer uh, CRM. Or we want to know the customer behavior. We can first use the machine learning model to to group the customer first, and then after we got the grouping, we can analyze different. Uh, you can extract the so-called representative, the center person of that group, and then you can. Um, Sorry, you can... I'm going to pause in a second. I got in the chat that there's someone who's saying that you're you're not really uh, easy to hear, Cyrus. Okay. So to benefit them, I would like to see if you can adjust your volume. Okay, uh, let, your let mic. me try. Um, try. That's that's Varun. Thank you very much for asking that uh, to to put in that remark. Okay, thank you. Sorry, as uh, the quality of Okay. Are you are you uh, available to speak closer into the mic? And Varun, will you do a thumbs up, please, if you can hear him better with uh, Cyrus after he does start to attempt to speak again after he's done the okay. adjustment? Yeah. Hello. 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 Is that better, Varun? Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm. I can hear you, but I want to make sure that Varun. Yes, yeah, he says much it's much better. better. Lovely. Thank okay, you. Sorry the, about that. Yeah. Maybe the <laughs> my quality is too and and actually my video is still hanging up my bit. All right, lovely. Okay, so we've got to, uh, two people who've now said it's much better. So great. I, I'd okay. like that they, they okay, can thank hear you. you. So can yes. we go back one step? I mean, okay, let's just dive into, I, I think you will elaborate a little bit more about machine learning and the application for it. If I sim simulate a, a scenario. So as a SME myself, I mean, uh, I'm in an, a family business this is for 60 years. So I have a lot of uh, richness in data. Uh, it could be in the form of an Excel spreadsheet. I've got some loose papers. I've got things that would actually be needing to be to be uh, uh, simulated or actually used or manipulated to make that data become gold. Because obviously, uh, right now, I I feel that I I have them sort of not in one convergent place. So in order for me to actually start. Uh, as a traditional business, what would I need to do if I had an archive of all this data that I have already in existence? What would you What would you like? What would you recommend? And what data should I be looking for in order to start to use machine learning in the practical sense? Okay. Um, first of all, um, I can say that all of the data will be meaningful for machine learning model. In okay. In general, uh, we build model. We try to as have as more data as possible. We we care about the raw of data more. We can say that we will excel data. You can you can you will, you must import it into the cloud. Maybe uh you need to some have some uh uh voice, but but it's it needs some programming. You just need some ID guide to have you have you import the data mm -hmm. and into the data warehouse or or or, or convert the format so that it is better for machine learning. And and actually, there are, there's a there are core data. There's two type of data. Uh, I assume that uh the the data in in spreadsheet is well format, but in general, is not. <laughs> to be honest, uh, we do a lot of data processing in uh, or machine learning. The people processing data inside inside spreadsheet. The the we we say about the data formats in that some of them we may have the telephone number with the space. Some of them we we say the have the past, and this is something different. And also, um, the data quality for uh, we need to first of all we import it, and then we need to have a have a cleaning process to to clean up the data. This is the first first step for machine learning, and this is so called the semi structure or, or clean up the data. Especially if we assume this is uh, a for a structure, you can structure it and then import into the machine learning model. But also, uh, if you got a lot of paper, uh, or paperwork or form data or or document. And at this moment, we are we are start doing something with machine learning, uh, especially in in AWS. There is a service called the TechCheck. TechCheck is very nice. Uh, you can you can scan your your application form or some uh some bill, 
it will help you to extract not only the test, it will help you to create a structure format. For example, you've got a table there. It will keep the table structure for you and then you, you can import the data into the data warehouse and then do the machine learning model. And, and, and this is the pitch of using AI to, 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 to make the image become data. And with all the data, we, we need to normally we will, we will have a data, so-called data warehouse is a platform or data, or data lake for something from Amazon, cloud computing company, we are, we are now start talking about something not data warehouse, we are talking something data where data lake. And then every data is put into the SD data storage. And then when we wait to do something on machine learning, we will, we will start running a, a, a cluster, so-called, uh, most popular cluster technology to do big data and machine learning is called the Hadoop. In Amazon, you can wonder how to cluster with EML and just, this is very nice. In the past, doing the machine learning or big data is, is not easy. As the case that you need to always wanting a cluster all the time to store the data and do the machine learning, big data analysis and build model. But now, uh, with cloud computing technology, it's quite convenient. You just store all of the data it separates all the operator in the SP, and then we want to build a model. You, you build a model, you run up the server, start the server, and you can start a lot, a lot of servers, say 100 server, 1,000 server. But after the machine learning model complete or big data and that's stopped, you just close, stop all of the server, you don't have to pay. And this is the quite difference between the traditional big data and machine learning. In traditional, we, we need to uh, store the data and the server together, but now, with cloud computing, we are, we are generally, we store the data in a different place and then the model building or computation will be in a different service so that we can decouple the data and, and computation or, cost, or say model building. And this is the reason why recently so many big data machine learning project uh, start. As using cloud computing, you, can, you don't have to always spend your cost on building server, one new server. Mm -hmm. So um, are you saying that I can actually, in, in, in simple terms, I can actually just do a scan of everything and upload it to the data warehouse and that the OCR actually do all the work and formatting it? I, and, yes, uh, yeah, but this much. is not simple OCR. Okay. Uh, for, for in the traditional sense, OCR, you just extract the test. But right. the raw test is meaningless. We, we need to extract the format data. Uh, okay. For example, you've got a, you've got a, you've got a form. You want to extract, they say, first name here. Second, uh, first name, address, telephone number. You, you want to have the format data. Okay, mm -hmm. you want to not just a test. You don't got a number, you don't know what it is. You need to, you need to, you need to extract it with AI, that is mm -hmm. mobile phone number. But this is a very nice project, very nice service from AWS last mm -hmm. year. It's, it's called TechTrack. TechTrack can help you extract a lot of documents uh, from, from the paper migration into the digital digitalization. Mm, I'm going to be quite excited to try that out. <laughs> hey, it's nice. I, we, we are using ISPO assignment. <laughs> I, I mark my student assignment and we use that track to extract <laughs> student answer. <laughs> and Fabulous. then we mark the answer. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. So, I mean, that is for the traditional and or the already existing data in my company. Let's say yeah. I have, you know, for, for any enterprise that is actually old, older companies, they would have all that. So we know how to deal with that. But what from now on, from moving on ahead, you're saying that we just have to collect every type of data. It doesn't matter because data is rich. It doesn't matter uh, how, we're, how, we're, how, how we're obtaining it, just put it in there and it's going to be formatted and we, we, it, we iterate it with um, uh, uh, supervised grouping and then the system will start to learn from our uh, own style what should be what. So it will start to learn, the machine will start to learn as we supervise it and then put, put more corrections to it and then they uh, upload again to the machine a machine then starts to understand a new pattern. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, um, this, is, this is the far, it's overall picture, but maybe I can say that machine learning or AI is, is a multi-step processing. For yeah. example, the first processing will be, uh, we say that uh, we just talking about tech track, something like OCR. This is the first, first round of extraction of the, uh, of the unstructured data into the structured data, more semi-structured data, we say that. Right. And then also at this moment, we, we even though can analyze video, analyze phone call. Uh, for example, uh, uh, we have a system to, uh, at this moment, that is very nice. We can integrate the track block 
if, with the cherry phone system. And then I can use the trackball to answer phone call. And for my application, I, I use the trackball to call my student automatically to remind them to do something. Mm. And, and this, is, this is also AI. But for the chatbot technology, it's something like that. Is then you can even record down all of the uh, the conversation from from the client. Yeah, what they're saying. And then using Amazon is quite straightforward. You just using another service called a transcript. You can extract the conversation between the customer and the AI model. And after the the extraction of the conversation, you got a, a script between the customer and and the and the and the AI chatbot. You can also analyze the, 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 the emotional or say that we say, say sentiment, okay, the sentiment. You can know that the customer conversation between the chatbot, is this complaining or is this neutral? Is this something they, they feel happy or not? And then we can do the, uh, actually AI will not do everything. Normally for the AI, we will just do the first part uh, to, to, to try to reduce the manpower, say maybe we just reduce the manpower for 10%, 20%, I think actually it's more, maybe it's half. It's really important. But the second half is still for human. For example, this example, we're doing the chat block with contact call center. And that's help us to answer the question from my student, from customer. And then we can follow up it after the chat block and give the simple answer to them. Right? Maybe some of the answer, the AI unable to answer. It will forward the, forward the call or forward the request to the, to the real call, to the real person. To customize service to get them feedback. This is the, the, the direction of the, or one of the AI service. Actually, for AI service recently, one of the most popular uh, tools is say from Amazon is so called Alexis. But actually, you can use Alexis not just from the hardware, you can build your, your custom uh, trapper for your business, for your company, and then you can, you can install it into the phone system, you can install it into your website. So let's say I'm really short on manpower and I don't really have all the physical time to train up a chatbot. Can mm -hmm. I actually procure, is there some data sources that I can actually, or grab from say, you know, some source on the internet, do I do some scraping so I can save okay. myself some time and then already have some FAQs in another website that I can use is as part of my training platform rather than to create the wheel. I'm actually then starting to see uh, some of the uh, common questions that are being asked and that I can put into the chatbot and then start my, um, my, lear my training for my chatbot to be uh, accelerated. Yes, and uh, we have a demo as the uh, use, case, use case that uh, we, want a chat, we want the chatbot to answer student question about the subject. For example, this is a web programming subject that is something like that. This is so specific. And at this moment, that is uh, from Amazon. There is a very powerful service called the Amazon Kendra. Kendra actually you can um, you can so straightforward. You just create a SV bucket and then upload all the document or say that oh you have a company information, you have a some uh, in Word file or PowerPoint something like that. Just upload into the cloud. The Kendra is an AI engine. It's, it's using a machine learning technique to understand the core the all of the document content. And then we can use a travel. Actually, we have done the demo. As the we can let the student to ask ask a travel question. When the travel feel that oh, it is something uh, not not P Z question, it will call. We will send the question to the AI engine Kendra, and the Kendra will able to quite smart, very smart. It just can, for example, if my student asking something about assignment, they were able to answer the assignment question for my student. And actually, for the manpower, it is nearly I nearly do nothing. I just for me, I just upload the file into the cow and then run the engine and then it become the expert on something. Actually, that is a demo quite funny from Amazon. Uh, and you, a evangelist, um, Julius Simon, he, he do a demo, upload all the Wikipedia data into the Kendra. Then the Kendra become a very, very smart guy. Okay, that he can answer anything of the well. Mm, interesting. So yeah. I mean, I have a question uh, that was specific to uh, to one of the one of the um, contributors, and I just want to be sure that we've got we've got that covered, and that you know to 
to, re to be able to resource and procure data sets, we just basically are using Candra to be able to, but we actually just point to where we want the data sets. Do you have any recommendations of sources or is Wikipedia now become the, because we, Wikipedia is really actually con uh, community contributors. So if we're looking at, I, I guess you would be looking at statistics with, uh, um, I would guess things like, um, uh, world world statistics or like now with the COVID, we'll probably I use Worldometer uh, to take some of that stuff, but it's actually drawn from an aggregate of, you know, John Hopkins and things mm -hmm. like that. So I guess we're looking at then a pointer of a reliable source because it's garbage, garbage in, garbage yeah, yeah, yeah. out. You're right. right. You're right. <laughs> um, but, but actually, to be honest, this is somehow it's not just for AI, even though for human, it's a problem. <laughs> okay, you ask once, you ask a guy something, it may not be correct. Um, but to be honest, if you want to be the, you want to have some accurate data, but, but Wikipedia may not be a good answer. Okay. Right. Uh, yeah, this example is not good. Actually, the data is, is speed. So there's a, you can't protect the quality. You don't pay mm -hmm. any. But, but, uh, but, to be, but to be fair, you want the machine learning model to be very smart. You, you need to be very good data for, for him. And mm -hmm. also uh, the, for the quality, you, you, you need to have some manpower to say that you need to prepare the data to train mm -hmm. them. And this is not, not a simple question. It's somehow you need to manpower or when you have some, some information already verified by human. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. this is the problem of manpower. But, but for the case that I ever have another service, it's quite funny for us. Uh, from Amazon, it's actually called that. Uh, in general, for uh, let me tell you an example. For example, in case that uh, we are talking about the catcher, okay, the catcher, uh, we extract the from data from the from the application form for credit card, okay. Right. Somehow, the some of the guy writing something is really hard to understand. And you know that handwriting maybe, for mm -hmm. example, for my, for my case that my student writing something, I don't want able to read it, <laughs> okay, yeah. But the case that if the, the machine learning model will able to do something from Amazon, it will, they will tell you that I, how is the confident ball from the AI? Mm -hmm. He will know that I'm very confident about that. Uh, I'm not sure, okay? Mm -hmm. And and at this moment today, uh, just with this, I maybe fake, maybe just a bit. There is called a new service called a uh, A2I from Amazon. It's very nice. This one is very useful. As the workflow is that Amazon already recruit a team of human behind the scene from Amazon.com, there's already a, a team called the, there's a project called the Me Mechanical Trunk is a, a company like everyone, for example, if, for example, currently there's some, uh, some of the person that are unemployed and they want to have a part-time job, they can join Mechanical Trunk. Actually, mm -hmm. what's Mechanical Trunk? Mechanical Trunk is a, is a outsourcing platform, but most likely at this moment, we are a lot of machine learning project. For example, the tech track one. Oh, they must, the AI say that hey, I'm not really confident what, what the guy writing. Then right. the AI will put back the job, to, refer the job to the human. From Amazon, I'll come say, can you try? Then, then the human will help you to answer the question. Mm. So that your data become very, 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 very accurate. And, and also, and after that, actually for machine learning, machine learning is you say that supervisor learning is the learning. You need to give the data for the, for the, for the AI to learn, okay? Yep. This Correct. is quite good, there's a feedback loop. Every time you, you let, the, let the human to do something, mm -hmm. next time the machine learning model will become more accurate and accurate yeah. and accurate. It is the idea of machine learning. It is not a single time, it's a always build a model iteratively. Yes, I can see that uh, one of the best uh, baselines would be doctor's handwriting because it's so illegible. So that would be yeah. a great way for the machine to learn and decipher, especially medical terms. Mm. Um, and I have another question that I would like to, I, I, in between doing the navigation of this, uh, I would actually also like to read some of the questions that are being asked in Slido and then try to, to weave it in. Um, and I know that in, I talked about my traditional business, but here's a question for someone who's in the consulting environment and he was asking what would it be this, uh, his starting point and how to set out a framework of uh, in, uh, inquiries and conversations and teach the AI based on them. I guess it's the same principles. Is there anything that is more specific on the consulting sort of spectrum that you need to actually add to what you've already said? Okay, yeah. Um, I, I, I can say that uh, you, for some kind of thing, basically, I want to train the machine learning model. It is especially for chatbot. 
you are actually from, from Amazon Prime will or using doing the the the, the tripod for Alexa or doing the tripod for Amazon Lex. This is the tripod service of Amazon. You don't need to train it significantly. Okay, it is the fact. Actually, Amazon already trained the machine learning model with their a lot, a lot of data in their Amazon.com. Mm. And, and they understand what you are talking. For example, I can tell you that, oh, you can tell the travel. I want to book a, uh, book a, book a uh, service, uh, maybe book key and something. On tomorrow, it will understand today's what, and to, on tomorrow, it will understand tomorrow afternoon, it will know the time. And it will, it will say, not so good, is it? Something negative, negative and if you understand what your conversation is talking, that's the reason why you don't need to train the, uh, the, the trackbook machine learning model to, to understand what uh, you are speaking. Okay, that's the first, mm-hmm. first issue. But what, what does the user need to do? Is that uh, this is something you, the machine learning model never know. It's about your business. Mm-hmm. Okay, for example, your travel business, your, yeah. your, your, your different business, they do know. <laughs> Okay. Right. They, they 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 have no knowledge about how to book a hotel, how to book a flight. Right. Okay. But this is the part of the the part or the company need to need to build on it. You right. there is an engine understand what you are speaking, but you need to uh think about your user what they what they what the function the we can say the for the obviously they call the intention. Okay. Mm-hmm. You need to have the intention of your business. The intention say that it's broken. The intention say that this is a cancellation. There's a string of the broken. This is the intent. You need to think about what is the how many intent it will be in with your trapboard to handle the problem. And then your right. view on the trapboard is about the business related feature. Not not understand the language. Okay. Understand the language is, is something very deep already in, in Amazon already done very well. You just need to input your business related knowledge for them mm-hmm. or, or data you want to collect from the client and then do some programming a little bit programming after the travel understand the, the response from the client oh you know, that is a, something is quite similar to be honest it's something like in, more of the travel is just like uh, viewing the form or nightly with, with speaker and my or phone something like that yeah interesting yeah, is that. Uh, yes, sir, i think we can also bring in c-lock I'll bring him in to the call because we, since you move into the questions as well, so I'll stop. Okay, yeah. Yep, sure, I'm, I'm here again. Yeah, I can hi. see that. I, I, I can st- <laughs> Feel free to jump in if there's something that you want to actually add to it. Um, I think uh, when we are looking at real life applications and how we can actually kick, you know, sort of kickstart uh, for any any business here who's listening in, they probably really are curious to know how to maximize or to where where they should start, sign up for Amazon and stuff like that, so that we can actually then um, start, you know, reevaluating what we need to do. And if we have to assign somebody in our company to do, to do the um, uh, project with AWS, what would it be that we need to actually, in terms of uh, talent or in terms of direction, what would we need to then be vetting in terms of who, which candidate in our company should it be that we actually are um, are to to look at to do the evaluation of the data? Should it be the company secretary or should it be you know an accountant because he's a numbers guy? Um, and so so who would it be logically to to ask in our company if we were to kickstart with Amazon? I'm sure. I think I think the first thing is you have to have a great uh, you have. Uh, you need to define what what is your use case, right. like what what kind of problem you're solving, and that's uh, what what should who should be handling that would be the business users. Like if you you want to know about uh, like how well your marketing campaign is doing, uh, mm-hmm. definitely your marketing executive should be the one in right. charge of the project. And then if you, you have any in-house developer, that would be the first people you, you jump in to say, hey, if, do you have any uh, AI experience that you can help help us to do this project? But like if if they don't, they, then you can take a look of AWS services. So uh, we do have different layers of AI services. So if you don't have any uh, AI or machine learning experience, you can always take a look of the application layer 
like what Cyrus said, that you can build a chatbot without any uh, AI experience, or you can do image recognition, or you can do a recommendation engine without any data, any machine learning experience. Mm -hmm. So that's that's how you should kickstart your uh, your AI project. Okay, that's really good. So um, I hope that the the audience is actually able to start pondering whether uh, who it should be that would be doing it. So getting the right purpose and then looking at the most talented person in that space. So in terms of, I think we've pretty much covered for the for the time constraints, I'd like to still put it back onto the floor, but um, in terms of uh, startups, because we've also got startups here, and I would say that it's the same sort of parallel principles on, on data, right, Cyrus, that we'd have to look at for, for startups as it would be for traditional, just really knowing that you're just flooding in the data and then doing the programming and making sure that the machine's learning the way you want it to learn, and you're just basically data is just what you need this the key point in all of this yes um, okay. but it takes time in general yeah uh, any machine learning or big data project yeah. um, nearly half of the time or more than half the time is to make sure the data is in a reasonable quality um, mm -hmm. at the, but at the second part is that uh, is it not really human is really the computational power as the as if you got a lot of data in the past, you don't have cloud computing, you need to have your own server. And it is, it's very expensive and not effective. As you want a big data project in general, you just want a few days. And after that, you, you, your server is useless. But now if your cloud is quite straightforward. We are we're using spot instance, they're very cheap. And, yeah. and even now, at this moment, there's it's, it's more and more, more services called serverless big data technology. For example, uh, if the data is somehow structured, or even though it's semi-structured, it's a JSON, it's CSV, you just need to use Avena. It put the data inside, upload the data in the SV all the time, and then it can able to help you to do some, uh, it's not say machine learning, somehow it's do the analysis. And for machine learning, it's not all the time, you just make regular and you update the model. But uh, I think that's it, not just for machine learning, for, for more of the business, they want to know the, to, for big data problem, somehow, to be honest, more big data problem is not just about the mean, the trend. Okay, you, you know that if you got a lot, a lot of data, you if you don't know, you, you got the mean already very complicated problem. A lot of businesses just look for the traditional, traditional problem. It's just say, oh, I want to know the trend, or, or is it up or down, and they do a little bit prediction. The the model is not complicated, but the problem is too there is too much data. This is the classical uh, machine learning case. But maybe some of some them are recently popular. A lot of people say they're talking about deep learning. And but not every problem can need to use deep learning, to be honest for myself. Uh, or or even though that if you're talking about deep learning in general, we are talking about high dimensional data. For example, there's an image, there's a video, or or even though uh, yeah, it's a voice or something like that. There that's good for deep learning is the data is quite very really complicated, but but for general business problem, you, you can use a lot of traditional uh, method to, to, to do the machine learning. A, a very classical method, very good at that. And, and it really depends it depend on the data type, the type of data in your, your different model. And not, not, not everything can lead you to use this deep learning, okay? <laughs> So uh, I, I would like to ask you about where would somebody go if they wanted to have certifications, uh, if you're an SME manager and want to actually start to, to get um, to, to uh, be an AWS um, uh, qualified person or to at least understand more about the many layers, how would the audience go about to get certifications? Do you, uh, does AWS have a training, step-by-step -step yes. training? Yeah, yeah, yes. And actually, a lot of training is free. Yeah, you, 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 can, you can take the free training from AWS.training, uh, from Coursera, from EDX. Their, their, their online training course is very good. And okay. if you want to have an in-person training, you can consult their training partner. There's a lot of training. And it depends on your, your direction of your of your or your career, or, or mm -hmm. if you just want to do something with machine learning, uh, you just need you are better to take the uh, machine learning certification or data analytics certification. Actually, it's, it at least you you can pass the certification. It's not it means nothing. Actually, I, I pass everything. 
but uh, at least you you know the service and and what their function, mm -hmm. and you will not. And very important to be honest, not not just for big data or AI. Using cloud computing, uh, is something like uh, you can simulate. It's so called ut utility. Uh, it's just something like water and electricity. Okay, mm -hmm. it is no longer like the past. Right, past you buy the server, you will take cost. But doing cloud computing is you can you can use a lot of resources unlimitedly in the cloud. Also, the cost is unlimited. You need to pay a lot. If you don't understand uh, the technology behind and how to save the cost and effectively using the car, uh, you, you take a certification, you, you will have a lot of return as you learn something or really save a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Okay. Correct. And in general, you, you have a path is called as uh, associate certification, maybe the architect, right? And then if you don't want to do something on big data and machine learning, it's good to have a machine learning and, and the data analyst. Like it, it, it let you know uh, when, it, when it, before you get to the you want to pass it, you take a lot of time to study, you will understand the big data technology in AWS. Not just using it, also you know how, how to effectively using it, how to try it, how to, how, to, how to train it up one by one mm -hmm. to build a platform. As the as cloud computing is, is quite different from traditional. In, in the traditional IT, you will build everything with server. Okay. But for, for the, at this moment, for cloud computing, you will try to leverage the, the P build service or manage the service from Amazon. You try to connect the building block together. It's, it's, it's the reason why the technology is moving so, so fast. Mm. As the building block from Amazon is crazily fast. Every year they have something something very very interesting and very powerful service you just need to it add that building block into your system for example this year we got kendra with kendra we can do the aiq and a even though doing nothing in the past we need to set up the question set up a search engine to to answer question okay um but now it's quite straightforward there's a recommendation for me is that you you need to try to building build on something build on top of something Mm -hmm. Okay, no, don't build from ground up. Build from ground up mm -hmm. is no longer the story for IT stuff. You need to build, you need to stand in the, in, in the shoulder of the guy. <laughs> okay. Mm. Very yeah, good advice. Maybe, maybe, yeah, just at, at one point, if you, you guys are really interested on learning AWS machine learning stuff, you, uh, you could just visit the AWS.training website. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there are tons of free online training. Uh, of course, these are all related to our AI services on AWS. Um, so just go visit AWS.training. Yeah, great. that is really quite good and up to date. And, and it's a fee. That is a path for different, uh, different, different machine learner. For example, you may target on background from data scientists, target from uh, background of developer. They already set up a path and training course. You just follow the path. Uh, you can become a machine learner. Excellent, great. And Jens here, I, I just took up the uh, AWS Activate Code again, so you can take a picture of that. And I think we should also start to move over to Remo, where you can actually continue the discussion with, with Cyrus at the Remo tables, and then we, we all go over there. So if you all got the picture here, and we can also share, I guess, the link to this via the follow-up email, C-Log. Okay. Uh, so in that case, I will just go on to um, Remo, where we are going to go now. <laughs> 